by His grace this morning. The lesson we have is a continuation of what we started last week, which is what is the substance of your relationship with God? What is the substance of your relationship with God? Is it true? Is it real? Is it genuine? Is it authentic? This is what we are examining. And last time we read some uh, verses of scripture which point out the differences of who is a true believer, who is serving God, using the substance or the requirement that is necessary as our relationship uh, with God. And so if we say we have a great substance in our relationship with God, it has to be true. It has to be something that makes it clear that what we say we are doing, it is in obedience to God's word. And last week we read the passage from Matthew 7, 24 to 27, in which the Lord Jesus Christ encouraged us that we are to build on what? Build on the rock so that the foundation, when the foundation is firm, when the foundation is strong, then we know that uh, we are building on something that will last. Also, it also means that uh, uh, the substance of our relationship with God is actually something that is true, that is authentic, and that if someone should ask, what is the substance of your relationship with God? We have to be able to respond and tell them why. Somebody say you are a Christian. Okay, why are you a Christian? Tell me why you are a Christian. And should we say, are you born again? Have you been born of the Holy Spirit? Have you been born with the regeneration that comes from the Holy Spirit? It's not just saying I'm a Christian. We have to have something to stand by. We have to have uh, the standard. And that is the substance which we are asking. If we have a relationship with God, on what is it based on? So today, we are going to talk about the parable of the sower. And what it's asking is that when we hear God's word, what do we do with it? Do we process it? Do we accept it? Do we follow it? Do we obey it? Do we do it? Or do we just say, oh, okay, thank you, and just uh, pass by? So the parable of the sower is one of those parables that we are examining. Again, last week we examined Matthew 7, 24 to 27. And this morning we will examine what the parable of the sower means. And here it goes. This is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. Then he spoke many things to them in parable, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good soil and yielded a crop. Some 
a hundred fold sum sixty sum thirty he who has an ear or he who has ears to hear let him hear amen matthew thirteen three to nine What is the Lord Jesus Christ saying here? What is he asking of us? What is he telling us for us to know? What the Lord Jesus Christ is saying is that it all has to do with the substance. It has to do with the quality. It has to do with the genuineness of our attitude. What he's saying about the sower. The sower is always the gospel or the Lord Jesus Christ. And the seed is always good. The seed is always perfect. The word of God is always perfect. And so as the sower spread the seed, we are told that what happened? Some of the seed, where did it fall? Some fell on the wayside and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell by the stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. And what happened? They withered. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. So what he's trying to tell us is that as Christians, we hear the word of God and the explanation is that the highway or the wayside here is one whose heart doesn't internalize the word of God because he or she is in a way uh, like a moving uh, vehicle. When you are in a vehicle that is moving and somebody is saying something to you, you are going to be saying, wah, wah. no, it's not going to be clear. You are going to miss some of the things that are being said. So when you are in a train or a moving and somebody is saying something, you know, what happens? The devil removes what you are trying to hear or remove, removes the understanding of what you need to hear. And so another way is to say that the devil deflects what you're supposed to know. And so you are not able to fully understand what you need to uh, hear. And that is the seed that is sown in you. The seed is good, but how it is, uh, you know, uh, you, you respond to it. The second part is what we call the happy-go-lucky person who has no firm foundation. And that is where uh, the wayside, down the stony ground, the streets, when it falls on the uh, stony ground or the stony places, these are people who say, that, well, they've heard the word of God, oh, amen. They say amen to everything they hear. They say, oh, yeah, that's true, that's good, and all that. But the question is that they hear it all right. But because, as in the first case, they are not able to internalize it, to process it, to work with what they have heard. The substance of what they have heard is good. But because they are not able to respond, they are just, oh, amen, amen, amen. And there is no quality in the understanding of what they need. And so they are able to just say amen and then they go. Nothing of substance. The other part, which you say is that they are like absent-minded person. They go to church, all right. They go to places of worship. They do all those things that are... But then, what happens? Their mind is closed. They hear it all right, but they have blocked off the understanding of the Word of God. You know, closed mind. The mind is closed. Whatever you say doesn't penetrate. The Word of God doesn't go in there because they have closed it. So the sermons they hear don't have any effect on their soul and so uh, they may be here 
listening to the sermon, but their mind is wondering, oh, I need to go shopping here, I need to do this, I need to... Uh, it's everywhere. It's supposed to be in the church. It's supposed to be in the assembly of everyone where we are all worshiping. But they have different things. And what is that? It means that, yes, they are at church, they are, but then their mind, they have thorns. They, have, they are on uh, places where they are being hindered. The thorny ground, they are always making excuses. Because, oh yeah, this thing, this thing. They are sort of filled with so many things. Entertainment, all other things that needs to be done. And this, and project here and there. But because the mind is all congested with things that needs to be done, they don't bear fruit. Because all they want to do, oh yeah, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do that. Uh, with excuses for things that they need to do. And so their engagement with the Word of God is just not bearing the appropriate, appropriate fruit. And so they don't prosper. However, the good seed, we all know, is those who have been regenerated, those who have been born again, those who have the Holy Spirit in them, those who know that this Word that they have heard, they need to really examine it. They need to read it. They need to study it on their own. They need to also go over it and say, consider and pray, Lord, help me. I want to understand it. Give me the wisdom to understand. Give me the uh, ability to understand what the Word of God because I want to really follow uh, what you want me to do. And so that is what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Those who process the word of God the right way, who have surrendered their life, who have done everything, they are able to bear the fruit. And that is when God says they are able to bear 100, 80, 60, you know, they are able to bear something, 30. There is fruit in them because they are listening and they are obeying the word of God. Another way we can uh, consider this is, uh, you know, some of us, we know what the Word of God has told us. We know what the Scriptures say. We know what the Bible says, that this is what we are supposed to do. So the question we are asking is that, what is the substance of your relationship? The substance, is what is the quality? What is the evidence? What is the way that you can confidently say that, yes, I am obeying this Word of God? Let's consider this. Christ, what did he do? He came, and in order to surrender to God's will, so that what he needs to do will be successful, because when he came on earth, he put on the human being, the natural human being, even though he had the spirituality, he had to obey, he had to follow the instructions. And he determined that he wanted to be baptized. He knew God's word, but in order to show to us that he needed to be baptized, he submitted to uh, the baptizer, John, and had to go in the water and baptize himself because uh, the apostle, uh, you know, as we know, we call him Apostle because he was, uh, uh, even though he is called the John the uh, Baptizer, but then at the same time, what he was doing was uh, obeying God. And so uh, John baptized the Lord Jesus Christ. He allowed himself to be submitted and he, he got baptized. And so what we see is that after that, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ continued. And after he went to be with the Lord, uh, to be with his father, he encouraged his followers, his apostles, to preach the gospel, to go and baptize everyone. He specifically said, "Baptize." So, baptize or baptism in this case is that anyone who has believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
must follow the same example the Lord Jesus Christ gave. And that is, yes, I'm a Christian. And what is the evidence? Oh, the evidence is that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I have been baptized. I have been baptized through immersion. I've gone through uh, the water, the river, the water. Because when John was baptizing, he was baptizing in the river. When the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized, he was baptized in the river. So, in the Jordan River. So, we also must follow the same principle. If we say we are Christians and we have not been baptized, what is the substance? We cannot say that we are. So, we need to examine what the Word of God says and make sure that we follow. Because the example in Acts, we find that when Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, was encouraging those who heard his first uh, sermon, what happened? He encouraged them, repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. So if somebody says they are a Christian and they don't want to be baptized in a river, how do you say that you have received all the benefit? What is the substance? Acts 2 says, 41, Then those who gladly received the apostles' message, the apostle Peter, were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000. They all gladly believe, and the substance of their belief was that they were baptized. So, there are so many examples. We have Philip, in this case, Acts 8.12. But when they believed Pete, uh, Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, and both men and women were baptized. Acts 16, 15 says, And when she and her husband were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you judge me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. You can see someone who has a substance because she submitted herself and the husband and everybody else were baptized. So what we are saying is that, for example, you are in a crowd. The teacher says, who knows something? What is the evidence? What is the substance of it? The... And then everybody says this way. And then one person says this way. You can't uh, lift your, your hand because you are not sure. You are doing like this. If you are sure, you say, this is a substance. I know it. So as Christians, if we cannot raise our hands and say that this is a substance, this is the reason why I say that I am now a believer. I have been born again. I have been baptized in a river. And I also am following. I am obeying the word of God. I am praying. I am attending services. I am doing everything that God has commanded me to do. And that I follow all the instructions. And by His grace, I am living the life that the Holy Spirit is placing in me. So that everything I do, I do it in obedience to the Word of God. And so as Christians, we must have substance. We must have evidence. We may have a true evidence that it is this that makes me a true Christian. And uh, the substance means it is authentic and it is following all the set of uh, rules that God wants us to perform as we lead a Christian life. We thank God for what he has brought to our attention and pray that we will continue to examine the word of God and to make sure that we are not doing it half and half. We have to follow all the processes. If God says these are the steps we have to follow, let us follow. If God says don't sin, these are the things we have to do. So if God is giving us uh, these instructions to follow, we believe we can 
confidently say that yes, the substance of my relationship with God is that I am obeying and following all the commandments. May God help us. Amen.